Hello, this is Gene. I'm going to actually respond to a comment that I had. I tried to explain myself back to him in the comments, but I don't think I gave him enough uh, to... I guess he didn't, rec he didn't respond back to my comments, and I even asked him to uh, debate me on the uh, topic. I think that his, his post was fine. I don't think there was anything... Uh, he wasn't being uh, disrespectful to me in any way. But I want to clear out some of those things, and I like to be able to do this if I can, if I have a comment that I can actually respond. So I'm going to do it. And I'm going to actually, um, this is a comment to the video I talked about, um, what was it called? It was when I took the open letter to uh, and Andrew Wilkow and Stephen Crowder about the alt-right and how, whether you somewhat support the alt-right or some of the beliefs in the alt-right, uh, that I think that uh, we were being lumped into people uh, from like Antifa and neo-Nazis. Uh, so this was uh, apparently by his avatar, he's a black man, which obviously I will debate anybody. I will debate anybody. Um, I don't know, maybe I should, before I actually do his comments, I just want him to know, uh, if I find his uh, Twitter feed, I'll try to just send it to him, with him, to him. Uh, but I'm going to put it out there for the public's uh, consumption. Um, I, till I was like 45 years old, and I think some people on my, my ch channel already knows this, I was a liberal. And after my stroke, I had enough time to just actually just start studying things. And I thought some of the things that I was carrying around was just me trying to help people. And in a lot of ways, it was, once I actually went through it all, I realized that what I was doing is I just gave no, ex uh, no, um, I had no expectation for, let's say, the black community. I was trained my entire life that I have to help them based on whatever we did in the past, regardless that my family, my ancestors, didn't come here until after the war or the Civil War ended. But re regardless, I was basically taught that in my family that we needed to do that. And it wasn't from a, a hurtful type of way. We didn't think that they were, you know, bad people, let's say. It was more that we felt that we had to help them. That I was just, I grew up in a quote unquote feminist uh, liberal household. And I was taught that way. And I had several, of course, when people say this and you're white and you say you have black friends, then oh, that's your being. I did. I had a lot. Um, I grew up in East St. Louis when I was very, very young. Back then, uh, East St. Louis was, all the families were there and there was normally, normally there was a father there. And there wasn't the crimer that it has right now. Now, maybe they're having a little bit more uh, change there in, in East St. Louis. Or they were until all this shit happened with Ferguson. But, um, getting back on the point. So I just want to tell this guy that um, it took me a long time to get to where I am right now and what I believe to be the right ca cause for what I believe needs to be taken care of. Uh, I have no issue with him saying that he feels that he wants to make sure that black people get what they need. Um, he should be proud of his race or his culture. Uh, and so this is what I want to, I want to respond to him because he talks about white supremacy and he apparently he, he still um, lumps us with uh, those who support the alt-right, and I've said it several times. <laughs> Some days I think I'm with the alt-right, other times I don't, because the, the leadership or the guy that people look at as the alt-right, like Spencer, and to an extent, uh, Jared H Taylor, I don't look at them as the leaders. Of course, they started it, let's say, but there's been several things before that that came out and it was even a black author that actually, and I'll try to put it down below so he can see it. He may already know who this is. He sounds very uh, knowledgeable about what's going on. But I just want him to know that this is not me with my white guilt coming back and telling you that, no, I'm not racist. I'm going to tell you how I got to where I'm at. You can take it for whatever it is. And thank you for commenting on my, uh, my video. I was hoping that you will respond after I responded back to him. I did want to debate you uh, through Skype or FaceTime or I don't care. And not really debate. I just want to see where you're coming from if you think that if the alt-right or a lot of people on the alt-right are just quote-unquote white supremacists. So let me go ahead and give you her co his comments and those who actually see this is not him. Uh, again, I think it was very uh, knowledgeable what he had to say, and I'm just going to say it. And remember, I had this issue with my, my, with my speech, so I'm going to try to get through this and not make any errors that I can. It was fairly long, uh, so it might be difficult for me. So here we go. His name is Dandelace, Dandelais, which I think is Greek for something. <clears throat> he goes, the alt-right is, ex is, is exactly what Richard Spencer say it is. 
Richard Spencer, Jared Taylor are white supremacists. So obviously I have an issue with that. I, um, but I'll go, out, I'll go ahead and go ahead and do the rest of it, and I'll go back. I'll go for each one. They want they want to have a their own society free from undesirables. They denounced the founders, and more they want uh, undir, undesirables from America. They believe this. Richard Spencer said that he wants a peaceful ethnic cleansing. These are his words. That's why, that's why they allies with other with other white supremacists or white separatists. And everything you say mirrors uh, Jared Taylor. I know I read him. Okay, um, I'm not Jer Jared Taylor. My experience is totally different than uh, uh, Jared Taylor's. Uh, of course, he went to Africa, and he had more of a, <laughs> uh, I guess, a down-the-ground type of uh, look at it. Not, personally, I don't look, again, I don't care if black people want to um, look back at their, cu their culture, their heritage, um, and say they're from Africa, and they want to embrace that. There was a movement in this country. I don't know who this guy is, but in the 70s and 80s, that guys were just really getting into, into that, and I had no issue with that. I kind of was, hey, that sounds pretty cool. I would like to know about about it. Know it. Know about it as well. Um, so his his um, thing is a little bit more. Sometimes when I say things, obviously I'm going to parrot some of the people from the alt right. It doesn't mean that I go furly furly down there. In my video, what I what I said is that there are basically differences between the races. And unfortunately, when people hear this, they think, "Oh my God, he's a white supremacist by saying it." And I, I think that basically the, the science is pretty clear on this. It doesn't mean really anything, really, uh, in the United States, because African Americans are not uh, people from Africa. They're from sub-African that have, you know, the 65 or 70 IQ from a, a group uh, standpoint. They are people that came in, uh, in the United States, and for a better, not a better term, but they mix with the European population, and the, I, the IQs actually went up. Now, you can say that's racist for saying it, but it's clearly true, and you see a lot of, uh, quote-unquote, mulattoes or mixed people that uh, have done very well in this country. A lot of athletes, you can tell that they have a white mother and a black father or the other way around. And uh, I see it all the time. I mean, I could sit there and list all these guys because they talk about how great they are athletically. And I guess they only get that from their black side. <laughs> but there is there was a time I said on many times in my videos that IQ is just one little uh, segment of how you can you can actually differentiate between the races. I've said in this video that individualists individually it's different, and I think this person still thinks. I don't know if I. Okay, I. Maybe I was somebody else I was looking at. But anyway, I thought he said something about differences between gr groups, but maybe he didn't do that. Maybe that was somebody else, and I'm sorry for saying that. Uh, what I try to get across there that there is the science of race realism, and if you're a part of that and you somewhat, let's say, ad adhere to that, almost almost normally you're going to be part of the alt right. And how you get there, and I'm going to do a video with two millennial woes about that. Who's a guy from the alt right, and because he's been told recently that the SJWs is, is basically the basically the same thing the alt right on the right. So. When you, when you start, start waking up, let's say, and you start looking in through feminism and cultural Marxism, and you go further and further, and you start looking at, like, let's say, the Holocaust and the story of the Holocaust, and realize that it's not purely, it's not purely true what happened there. There's, there's something going on there. Uh, and then you go further down, and you get to where the alt-right is, and you get to uh, race, race realism. And the first thing you want to do is say, that's bullshit. Everybody's equal. And I think I said that in this video as well, and some of the other ones I've done as well. The, que the question is, is no, <laughs> we're not. We have uh, equality under the law, and I said that in that video as well. And I think that he believes, and again, he's talking about Spencer and talking about Taylor, he, and he's 100% right. Uh, in his perfect world, that's what he would want. He would want all white people to be together. Both of them would want that. I think I've said in this and in other videos that I think that that's just a, it's not possible. Now, if I say that, in, my, in the back of my mind, am I saying, would I really want this? No, I don't. There's, I understand that every race has got uh, value to the human race. Uh, when you start talking about that little rabbit hole that I was talking about, 
and you go past feminism and anti-feminism and the family courts and you go to immigration and then you start saying, well, and he said it in, in, in doc, undesirables. I don't look at any African-American here as undesirable. I don't. You're here legally. Uh, we can talk, and I'll talk about a little bit later in this video about what, uh, as white people, uh, we, have, uh, a, we have an issue for on both sides of this. It doesn't mean I should walk around with white guilt because of what my ancestor did. This is a different type of thing. And also, there's a, there has to be a call on the black community to get their act together, uh, and we'll talk about that as well. So what these guys talk about are when you get down the rabbit hole, and this happens to so many people, people that start classical liberals that I was, voted for Democrats for 35, 40 years. Uh, then I realized that they weren't doing nothing for the black community. And then I start, and then I start realizing that my people that I know, good men, were getting destroyed in the family court systems. Uh, black men were going to prison uh, and serving more time than white people. I was like, this is not good. Why is this? And you find all these places are run by Democrats. So I start past, I started backing off from that, and I started realizing what the social cell welfare state did, welfare, single mothers in the black community is special. It's, also, it's happening in the white community as well. So I've been an advocate. Before I became, quote, unquote, a support, supporter of the alt-right, I was an MRA. And I realized that all men have issues uh, right now. Uh, there, there is a, I guess there's a little thing going on right now that a lot of white people, especially uh, heterosexual white men, feel that they're the ones that are being picked on. And they are, to, to a point, because we're the majority still, and you, you expect that, uh, and we still pay all the taxes, and when things don't actually change, and the, and the media is so leftist, uh, and they blame white people um, so much more than anything else. Now, clearly, people on the other side will say the same thing, and they'll say, hey, we're in, we go to jail a lot more than people that are, that are white. And I would say, well, obviously, we can have that deb debate, and I would love to have that debate. I don't want to do it right here because this would end up being two or three hours long because there is a reason for all of it. But what I said, when I grew up, I was taught uh, about the man, the good man. And I said that in some of my other videos as well. As well. My mom says, you can't do this to women. You have to, have, you have to, be, you have to provide. You have to be a good man and all that stuff. And then I realized that happens in the black community as well. And I see so many men, so many young men, black men, that they've lost the power in the, in the community because they know there is no real pl place for them. Uh, whether they're, they, they have babies or they don't stay with their, the, the uh, wife or the girlfriend, and then the state basically becomes the father, and eventually but it's like this circle shirt that goes on in the black community. And there are a lot of people like me that have Marched that have tried to, to do things better and we give so much money to this and nothing ever changes and eventually people get older and you get you get upset with it and that's that's always going to be there the, the minority is going to be somewhat jealous of the majority we know that but there are a lot of people that understands that when white people become the minority like it's happening in South Africa that they don't think it's going to be a good thing so when you start thinking what am I going to do about this and then we realize that you know over in around the world we're only eight percent of the entire uh, population. And there is, media is just out there all the time. I mean, there are so many tweets out there, so many articles talking about how great it's going to be when white people are no, no longer around. And these people never get any in trouble for it. They continue to say what they're going to do. And anyway, and I don't want to, I don't want to, what he had to say is his valid to a point, especially when it comes to Richard Spencer and all, um, Jared, Jared Taylor. Um, I probably, in my video, and I'm not going to back off of it, but I probably shouldn't have really talked about uh, we need to get the rack together on the alt-right, and maybe people like Jared Taylor would bring in uh, Richard Spencer because he's right. This guy is right that uh, if, if it was his way, he would want it that way. Now, again, I would hope that this guy would actually watch some of the videos like uh, at the Policy Institute, and I'll uh, link that below, um, to talk about the difference between the races. And I, and I want to go back to this because I've said this for many years. Uh, I didn't know about race realism but I, I knew that that there was differences between the races, and I always looked at it from like the AQ, the athletic quotient. I thought that black people are inherently better athletically based on the type of sports that we play in this country. It doesn't necessarily mean they're better all the time. I mean, I had a friend who was a, he's actually a cat or a colonel right now in the Air Force. He was a six eight, 
dude, great dude. Uh, but he's black, okay? And uh, he was my uh, boss for a long time. Guy could not play basketball. basketball. I mean, they'd always like, they'd always pick him, and he sucked. Now, that's just stereotypical that, you know, whatever. It's like people can't, like, white man can't drunk. So, but getting back to this, when he talks about uh, undesirables, yes, not people here, here that are here illegally. We want uh, the birth weights, of, or we want the, the illegals to leave. A lot of people on the right want that to happen. A lot of people on the left that won't say it will actually say it. Uh, because we don't want to be re replaced. We don't, uh, I mean, if, if it, was, it was on the other foot and you were 90% of the population 50 years ago and now you're 65% of it, and you see the crime that's going on, and, and I hope this guy understands this, that black-on-black -black crime is unbelievably, unbe is so, so bad, but black also uh, have gr the crime against white people are so much dis disproportionable, I can't even say it, but it's just out of whack. And I know what the issue is. I don't think it's poverty per se. I think there's no fathers in, in the home. And back back in the in the seventies, you know, this whole movie came out. Detroit, before the the riots in Detroit, it was one of the best cities in the country, and it was very similar with how much the black uh, family had and the white man uh, the white family had. It was within like five percent, so it's almost in the in the margins. But after all this, and then the state had to come in, and then the federal government came in and basically said, hey, white or black people, we have to take care of you. It's not your fault for anything. So when people are white, let's say, or liberals, and, and like, well, I want to help these people because, you know, slavery. <laughs> but it's not really that anymore. Uh, it's like uh, there's differences. Uh, I feel that overall, uh, clearly, slavery was a bad thing. I don't think any black or any... A white person. There are some. I'd say in this country, let's say there's, I'm just going to say 5,000 truly white supremacists in this country. I think the rest of those people who might somewhat support the alt-right or believes in race realism or believes in European heritage or thinks that uh, the um, our country should come back to a balance of, let's say, I'm not going to say 90% because I, I think I said it in that video that it's never going to happen. Again, by saying that, maybe I'm I'm got my cards out there. I'm a racist, and I, I want that to happen. That I, I want to get, want them to go go back to Africa. And I personally, I don't think that would be a good thing. But and I don't think that the black community, if you actually ask them to do that, they won't want to do that anyway. So so it's again, I I understand where he's coming from. Um, my point I wanted to say from a white person, if, if we're going to do this, if we're going to go down here and say, well, you're a white American and you're a black American, um, we do, we made a big problem, made a big uh, mistake uh, in the 60s. I'm not saying the civil rights was, was a bad, bad idea, but I think all the shit that happened after that, which fostered the single uh, mother epidemic in the black community, which fostered uh, guys that didn't have any fathers in the home, that start that started the um, crack issue and all that. Now people on that side or people that that talk about that are part of the black nationalist stuff that say that the white man put that in their uh, their community and because we hate black people. Okay, I don't know if that's true or not, but all I know is that at some point in both in both communities, and I'm like I said, as a white person, again, I wasn't a, I was not of of a, a voting age to. Uh, put that into law, but those people back then really thought we had to do something for the black person. And that and the, the divorce laws and family courts, all to me, it was all um, interrelated. And when I started going through this change of my of what I believed in, I saw all this stuff and the damage that it does. And, but, and eventually it goes down to this, and you start thinking, I want to make sure that I preserve what I believe is more important to me. Now, you can say that's racist or whatever, but I don't think it is. And I don't think any black person would, would I hope, would say that uh, trying to defend their culture, their races, is somehow bad. Because it's apparently okay for everybody else. And this is going to be sounding like I'm complaining, but it's truly true. You, as a white person, you can't say white pride. Now, I wouldn't do that anyway. I think more of the Western civilization needs to be protected, and I said it in the video, 
that Western civilization was created by white people. Now, again, you can be upset about that, and you can say that I'm racist for saying it, but it's factually true. I don't know that you're somebody who believes in the we, we, wings, uh, the we, we kings there is, or all that stuff, or that stuff. I don't, I don't care, but I know about the last uh, four or five hundred years, that's, you know, Western civilization is, is a white creation. So when I see what's happened in Europe, and people I know over there are being involved, almost getting killed by uh, terrorism, and I see the, the the president that I voted for twice basically looking at Black Lives Matter as as something that's good. It would have been great. Look, you may not know this, but I was a member of the NAACT, NAACP in my 30s or 20s and 30s. Uh, I thought it was the right thing because I, I felt that we needed to do something. Uh, whether what that was, this cultural Marxism or this white guilt that I had, um, seeing roots when I was young or say, oh my God, I can't believe he did that because 99% of white people in this country obviously looked at that at horror and we, we felt that we need to do something about it and the greatness about, about me or the white culture or whatever is that we try to help when we can. Have been bad people in the past? Yes. Uh, have there been racists in this country? Yes. But we have to be clear to say that racism is just not a white issue. It's every, every, race, every race has this. And there's always, between the minority uh, population and the majority population, there's, there's a jealousy, especially from the, the white, uh, or the uh, white, the min minority uh, population. Um, I think this is fact. And when, when I talk about race realism, I think that that's fact. I think that every um, psychological test, any um, uh, imperial um, test have showed this. Now, we can talk about the culture is make their IQ lower or maybe the fact they don't eat right, or whatever. Uh, and we can go back to comparing Africa from to Europe and look at what they built there and what they built here. I mean, I think it's clear. Um, but I don't, again, I do not really equate African, or excuse me, African Americans, and I don't like that word. You're black American if you want to use that, or you can say Americans. Other of my videos talk about Americanism, and that's really where I'm at. I'm in between the alt-right, and what I consider as ap uh, Americanism, which basically what Trump is. I'm wearing in between that because I'm aware that there's a problem here and there's, there is a difference between the races. And I would do whatever I could uh, through schooling or whatever to make uh, the IQs go up better. Now, sometimes through genetics, almost all the tests say this, that you can't really change that per se. It's something, in, it's 70% is through gen genetics. But there's still that 30% that allows you to get it to where it is. Now, again, I don't know what, the, I think it's 90% or 90 is the average IQ of an African-American. In the United States, I think it's 100 for a white American, let's say, or European American. Uh, that's a difference. Um, but 10, was it 9 or 10 of the top 10 uh, 100 meter dashes have been black people. So <laughs> there is, there's differences between the races. And to say it doesn't mean that you're racist. doesn't mean that uh, if Jared Taylor talks about race realism, that because he might be a white, a white supremacist, and you know what? Maybe I'll give you that. And maybe I'll give Spencer that side as well. Although I've seen several videos with him that says that he doesn't believe that. He, he thinks he celebrates all races. Um, I guess you could say like Hitler did if you want to say that. Um, but he thought there was differences. And unfortunately, or there are there are a lot of um, people out there that maybe just takes it the other area, which I want to talk about. And we talk about the 1488 guys um, that really believes that um, that black people are animals, and they can't. Um, they're not really respect. They're not really responsible for what they do. And that gives me back to the good man things, because I was told all along that I had to do this stuff. You know, I was responsible for everything. If I was going to have sex with a woman, I had to be responsible for everything. Uh, it's the same thing with, um, we expect, or there, there's a, sectum, a segment of the population and a political party that believes that black men, especially, because they love the, the empowered black female, they believe that white or uh, black men are not responsible for what they do. And when you don't have a father in the country or in, in the home, and somebody to, to say that this is the the roles, but then they just that that um, perpetuates through a generation. 
And then we have to do things to fix that. But it's never going to be fixed until the family and the black community get together and fix it. And so I've talked about all this before. And obviously this guy has only seen one video I did. And I, I des I, I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad that he um, uh, responded. And I hope I got my point acro across out there. I'm not going to sit there and say, I'm not a white supremacist. Okay, I know what I am. I, I go down the, the road, and if somebody comes up to me, we have a conversation. I don't look at them based on the color of their skin. Um, I can say it like any other white person. I've had several black uh, friends. And I'll tell you this. In my lifetime, um, I've, I don't think that one of them has been a Democrat. They've been all Republicans. And I don't know why that is. Maybe because a lot of them in the Air Force, some maybe uh, maybe uh, some of the people that go in the Army or other areas, uh, maybe they're more Democratic they didn't say it to me to my face, but now there are several people I know on, online uh, who have talked about getting off the, the Democratic plantation because, and I hope that you're not a Democrat, okay? You, we can have this debate when it comes to what is a real uh, white supremacist and whether the alt-right is part of, the, uh, part of that movement, whether they're white supremacists. I don't think they are, especially guys like Millennial Woes, which I'm going to link below so you can listen to some of his if you really want to go down this road. Um, Guys just like myself talking about immigration and what might happen, that uh, why you would think that we would be upset that we're going to be the minority in a country when there is so much out there that on media especially that's run by people that we don't want to talk about, they, they talk about the no <laughs> right, that is trying to, to divide us and to have a right race war. Uh, most of the people that I talk about, they're, uh, they're liberals, or excuse me, they're Republicans, they're black they understand where I come from. They may not like it, per se. Um, you know, obviously they think that we should be able to together. You might be a, a globalist. I don't believe in that, okay? I, I believe that people here that are natively, now we can talk about the native Indians and all that stuff, but the, the issue is, you know, right now, um, and I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, I, I do uh, thank you for um, responding to me. Um, and, you know, the whole thing that, we got to get past if, you know, the, the thing is, and I talk about it in several of my videos as well, is that the black community has been at like 13% of the population for a long time. And I think you understand why, because you have a lot of babies, but you also abort a lot of babies. And uh, uh, young men, um, African Americans die at so much younger than white people do, uh, usually from other black people. Um, and we need to stop that. Uh, but just giving you guys or... Ha giving you guys. I, that sounds stupid. But uh, just continually just like reparations or anything like that's not going to change the problem with the black community. You can be upset that you feel the white man is privileged, let's say, but that's not going to fix your own community. And if I don't know if you want to fix your own community or you're part of a globalist and everybody is the same race and there's no differences between the races. I don't know by, based, by, based by that. It's fact that you actually read and and um, listen to D Taylor and Sp Spencer, and that's rare uh, on both sides, let's say, because a lot of white people, especially uh, white li liberals, they just fall along down this um, pr primrose path that they've been taught forever through academia, through media, and everything else. And it sounds like you're not there. So I would love to be able to talk to you and see where you come from, where you come from, what you want to talk about. I think that uh, this is the type of d d debate that we have to have. Um, and I've said this many times on my videos and on Twitter, is that I really, really believe that the last war that we're going to have to save this country, Western civilization, is going, is going to be the black on the, on the side of the white man to, d to defend Western civilization. Because we can't allow all these people coming to this country from areas that just don't have a lower IQ or their culture is just, is just messed up. And uh, it's going to be that way. It has to be that, that way. It, it ain't going to work if we have this fight with black people. Obviously, we're still the majority, and we have more guns, and it's not going to be good. we got to get together on that. And, you, you know, you can be on one side of this, and, and maybe not talk about group IQ and, and say that that's bullshit or, or, um, or people who believe this stuff or white supremacists. I don't really care. At the, at the time that we have to be together, I hope you're there by my side because I will be there for you if something comes in and tries to stop uh, somebody that's not 
uh, you know, illegal or something like that that tried to change us, you know, like, let's say, a, a, a Islamic um, caliphate, let's say. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you get this. I hope that maybe in the future you and I can talk about this. Um, none of this, what I said, is supposed to be, I'm not trying to be offensive to you in any way. This is how I believe. I can talk, like I said earlier in the video, I can go on over this for two or three or four or five hours. How I got, where I got, um, and I am not going to, I'm not going to feel guilty about saying I want to preserve Western civilization, and I'm not stupid enough to say where that came from, and that's basically it. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later, and there'll be another video later today as well. You guys have a good day. Bye.